when we're trying to optimize a condition, ISOs are a big issue. There's ISO quants and ISO costs, and there are ISO profit curves. There's all kinds of ISOs. What we want to look at here is where those ISOs become relevant in terms of cost minimization. So, first of all, let's sketch out our graph where we have two goods and we're trying to decide how to produce these two goods in such a way as to minimize our costs. Now, one of the things that we want to pay attention to is our ISO cost line. The ISO cost is a way of showing um, how to produce different amounts of X1 and X2 at the same cost. So we have our ISO cost and we have to make trade-offs between X1 and X2, how much of each one of those we produce within this sort of cost containment. Now, if we have more to spend, the ISO cost will be out further to the right. If we have less to spend, it will be further in towards the origin. But we'll always have these parallel lines, these ISO cost lines. The ISO quant, on the other hand, tells us different inputs that can be used or different input mixtures that can be used to produce a specific single quantity. So, for example, if we have an ISO quant here, we'll call that ISO quant 1, this tells us the variety of ways that we can mix our inputs. And let's just say it's labor and capital. We put labor and capital together into a you know, into a mixing bowl and we get out certain kinds of, or certain amount, a certain amount of quantity. And if we put a little bit more labor and a little less capital in, we'd get the same quantity. That's what the ISO quant line is telling us. Now if we look at these two curves, the ISO cost and the ISO quant line, what we notice is that we've got a lot of options inside this ISO cost line. That basically means if we're producing on this ISO quant at this point, we're not spending our budget. If we produce on this ISO quant, ISO quant 1, at that point, we're exceeding our budget. So we need to reallocate goods, or we need to find out a better way of producing a particular output within our budget constraint. Now, ISO quants look a lot like indifference curves, where we have a whole family of them. And if we can find an isoquant, I'll just call this IQ2, if we can find an isoquant that just touches our ISO cost line, it's just tangent to the ISO cost line, what that's showing us is that we can produce this amount of output, and the least costly way of producing that amount of output is to be on an ISO cost line that's tangent to it. Put another way, as we've seen before, we want to find where the ISO quant and the slope of the ISO quant and the slope of the ISO cost are exactly the same. That tells us that we can produce this amount of X2, we'll call that X2 star, and this amount of X1, we'll call that X1 star. We can produce that combination, given our labor and capital mix, in the least costly fashion by producing these two amounts on that ISO cost. So this is the amounts that we want to produce, this is the cost containment or the, the, uh, the force that controls how much we're allowed to spend, and these are the amounts that we can produce given a labor and capital mix that puts us on this ISO quant and that ISO cost.